This week's guest, we have Eric Bauman with the Gold Foundation, executive director. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Eric, where do you where do you stand? Where, on yeah, where do you convention? When was the last convention you went to? <laughs> uh, convention? Why? Well, we're just getting ready to go to. There's so I'm in the running industry and so we're good getting ready to go to the running usa um, convention it moves around the country but this year it's in denver so we're heading there in february denver where the or see yeah, full the, circle the sunshine state <laughs> the sunshine state <laughs> oh geez that's what they call what, it. <laughs> what time of year is that they go uh, it's february february yep lots yeah. of sun in february in yeah colorado yep. i'm sure yep. you know that movie reference no denver the sunshine state no i want to know i want to so know so disappointed I'm sure we'll know what it is. Yeah. Okay, what you can tell us. What? Old school. Oh, oh that's good. yeah, one of the best yeah. classic. That is a great show. I yep. really do like that show. Yep. So, what are you going to do at the at the show? Uh, so we go there. You know, it's just um, it's a running um, conference where you have a lot of race directors from marathons around the country um, and um, and also vendors. And so we're going to learn about best practices and and hopefully bring back some great information that we can incorporate into the Ag Marathon this and month. share some of your best practices. Yep. Yeah. Yep. That's the idea. Yeah. Eric, speaking of best practices, I need you to take a, a butt cheek to your left because you're off oh, center on right. Old Faithful, and I just think it looks weird. Okay, that's exactly. so much better. Oh yeah, yeah. it's Brandon's best practices. Visual <laughs> podcast, <laughs> <OCD>. visual <laughs> podcast. There's, there's the art. I thought you were going to yeah. say, "I'm going to need you to take a sip of that beer." <laughs> just to the left, just to your <laughs> just left. Just to your yeah. left. All right. Yeah, drinking the too. untamed yeah. uh, IPA. <laughs> so very good. Eric, you you really don't have any tattoos, um, and maybe I don't, but I'm going to get one tonight. <laughs> you know, like say, it, 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 stay tuned for the full the full That's podcast the because yeah. Lynn is going to give me a tattoo tonight. Um, your your background. Let's let's jump over to you real quick because um, I could talk, I'll spend all night talking to Luna. Um, <laughs> Is, is yeah, it's, I just have to say, it's fascinating. I'm it really so is. I'm honored yeah. to be here with Luna. Because yeah, I, any just, questions you guys have, yeah, like, feel so free to ask. It's fascinating just to listen, and, and uh, I'm such an admirer and um, of your art and yeah. what you're doing. So. Thank you. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. How, how did you go from e EMT <laughs> to, to Goal Foundation? Yeah, so previous to me being with the Goal Foundation, I was with the City Fire Department. Yeah. And uh, I was... Yeah, it's been a wonderful career there. It's 25 years of being a paramedic, and um, no stories from that whole time period. No stories. No, no, no none. No. <laughs> that means you want at least three times with the three lives that you've had. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah but no, that was a great, a, a really great time of my life and a wonderful career. And uh, and what kind of transitioned me to Goal Foundation was. Um, in the last portion of that career, I was putting together the medical portion for the marathon. Mm, yeah. And, uh, and so that's where were you volunteering or were you no, we okay. were putting together the ambulance plan yeah. and, and, and working closely with emergency management and all the different components that go into the marathon, yeah. um, in, in that matter. And so that's how I got introduced to goal. And, um, but even before then I was really interested in the goal foundation and what they were doing yeah. and particularly the, just the impact that I felt like they were making in the community on a lot of levels yeah, well, outside of the marathon. Well, yeah. Let's drop that real. So people who don't know what goal is and goal foundation right. is, what, what is that real quick? Yeah. yeah so, so get out and live, get out and live. Yeah. See, I ah, mm -hmm. great. Oh, I'm so yeah. glad you know what it stands for. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that, so, that's one of the things it stands for. There's probably other. Yeah. 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 Oh, you do know your history because there is we, something. We've been here a while. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But that is the latest, uh, the latest thing that it stands for. And um, yeah, get out and live, and 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 really, goal just to distill it down is a, a nonprofit here in Ogden. It's been around since 2011, and um, and we do a couple things. We put on events. We produce events. The largest being the Ogden Marathon, which most people know us for, and. Um, but we also do smaller running events. We do mountain bike events. And, um, and then last year we ventured in and partnered with our great friends over at Trails Foundation in Northern Utah and Eric Manning. I know he was on the show earlier. Yeah, and we don't, we don't bring up that name on this yeah. show. <laughs> yeah, there's a clause oh that he's gosh. just not allowed. Yeah. 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 No, I'm just Todd gives him so much shit. It's fantastic because <laughs> er Eric is one of my favorite guests, and he does such a great job on the podcast. So anyone that can him. take it like that guy yeah. takes it, I give it like so bad. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> He's great. And that whole organization's great. And so we partnered with them and put on a new event last October called the Northern Utah Trail Fest, and, um, which was just uh, fantastic for its first year. Which, you should have tattoo artists there. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah, yeah. if you yeah. can get the health department in and be like, hmm, looks clean enough, then yeah, we can. Oh, that's true. Brandon, yeah. can, you There's some hoops. can you help us on that? I have no, I, I mean, I have I no can. help at the health okay. department. You need yeah. me? <laughs> yeah. I'll help yeah. you. That's great. I got yeah. them, you know. <laughs> On speed dial. Probably. Oh, <laughs> I yeah. always need to talk to them. Like, yeah. <laughs> what do I do? <laughs> yeah, they're they're really chill, especially like if you do it here in Utah. Yeah. It's kind of scary how chill they are. <laughs> yeah. Like, huh. Yeah, they're like, you're too chill. The fire department too. Well, that's good to hear. <laughs> <laughs> that's good to hear. <laughs> good people. They're good, good people. people. <laughs> they are. Good people. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Go, Fa- Go Foundation yeah. is busy you're th- every year and you're in your what year? Third? Yeah, this is the third year okay. for me, but um, I started with Goal in 2019, which was right before the pandemic hit. Yeah. So mm. um, I, I started in October, and um, I think we made it to February. We started doing some of our smaller events, and then that's where— uh, It was a good time to get a new position like yeah, that. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, the timing was perfect. Yeah, and that's when everything stopped. So and wait, so, are they found, like, conventions? No, mm-hmm. not conventions. Um, more athletic events. So oh. we've got uh, running races, marathons, okay. bike races. Yeah. Cool. But uh, the challenge with that, in that, r- around that time, was that everything we did um, really consisted of bringing large groups of people together. So you run over there. This person runs yeah, over here. Exactly. So <laughs> don't run too close. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so we inevitably we had to cancel our events in 2020 mm. and 2021. We came back with a virtual format because we were kind of in that hybrid in between time where we, I think the whole world really n- nobody knew what was happening. Mm-hmm. Um, and then last year really was our first year of bringing back all of our events in a in person live format. So fantastic year, um, just everything went extremely well event wise, and and here we are. We're Does the Arlington for- Marathon do a at home event? They did, yeah, in 2021. How, what was the setup on that? Yeah, so we did a virtual event. Uh, so 2020, we had to cancel completely. Right. 2021, um, we did a virtual event where we created uh, a platform where people could run any of their dis- any distance that they signed up for um, anywhere in the world. And we created an online community and a Facebook group and, um, and people from di- nine different countries. And uh, hmm. people did their run. Uh, all over the world, which was really cool. It was cool to see the online engagement um, in, in a time where we just couldn't put people together. Still, sure. so right. Well, I, for one, appreciated that step on the way back too. I think a lot of people, yeah, embraced as much as possible that sort of at home online, you know, activity. Yeah. But that also, you know, had a level of interaction and you know, chat rooms and that type of thing. And so, you know, you, you miss that's a very social activity. Right. It is. Yeah. And, I'm, I'm, and thank you for that. Uh, you know, we were kind of looking at it as, uh, you know, what do we do? What do we do right now? And um, and we just felt like it, it's it's too important of an event um, to just do nothing. And so uh, we ventured into that space, into the virtual space, and we learned a tremendous amount about, you know, even looking at the kind of the journey from when we started thinking about a virtual event to what we ended up with. Uh, we learned so much, and it was great to see that we could still provide an impact in people's lives. Mm-hmm. And that's what we were really out to do. So, mm-hmm. uh, and it, and it uh, helped kind of fill that void until we could get back to normal. Which we're back to normal. Kinda. I like forget yeah. we went through a whole yeah. pandemic. Yeah, 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 yeah. So. yeah it feels. It feels, it feels but your like planning is getting closer to back to normal. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And last year, last May, um, we did the we did our first in person Ogden Marathon since 2019, and uh, it's fantastic. So, as somebody who doesn't uh, run at that level, <laughs> kind of tell the <laughs> kind of tell our audience how big of a deal the Ogden Marathon is. Like it is, it is, it's a big deal. Um, and, and why is it such a big deal? I mean, is, I know location plays into it. I know that the planning plays into it. I know that it's one that people return year after year. Like it's one of their, on their list that they have to do. What's special about Ogden's Marathon? I mean, Todd, we all know. I mean, I, I'm at the start line. Yeah, well. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's like, really <laughs> it. Yeah, Brandon's at the start line, yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> yeah, no, it, never mind. <laughs> it has a history, right? It does, yeah. So, yeah, this is its 22nd year. So, oh, wow. Um, but, yeah, it, it is a big deal. Um, and I think, you know, 
we can talk about why it's such a special race. And, um, but I think, I think really to answer your question, what's such a big deal about it is what it represents to this community. Right. So it's a beautiful course. It's a Boston qualifier. Um, Brandon is at the open. Brandon right. is mm-hmm. at the, the start line, which really, you know, people from all over the world come just to see that. It's weird. Uh, whether they're running yeah. or not. Yeah. Brandon's yeah. start line mix. Yeah. 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 Which is so really totally good. what it is, by Which the way. is really good, by the way. Yeah. Um, but what's cool about it, I think, um, is what it, what it means to Ogden or what it means to this community. And regardless of if you're participating in it as a, as an athlete, or if you're a spectator or a volunteer, you know, we have thousands of volunteers that, that make this event happen. Um, it's community, Mm -hmm. it's a community building event. It's probably the largest, I would say the largest single day event that happens in our community. Mm -hmm. And, um, and you know, I would say regardless of if you're a runner or not, um, come down to the finish line and just oh man just watch it's cool the finish lines it's, are brutal yeah oh, it'll they, bring you, you will to cry it'll bring you to tears yeah wow. and um and that i think is what's so meaningful not only to see people fulfilling their personal goals and their dreams um but just seeing a whole community come together um to to celebrate a great day and and in all seriousness and I, and i'm you do cry. And yeah. our, our good friend, Shane Osgathorpe. So I, I, I am at the start, but Shane crushes it. So he's at the finish line yep. and he's out there six hours or yep. something. He's our MC. MC. He's rain. out there for like 12 hours. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Rain or shine. Rain or shine. And, and it is amazing. I don't know how you feed the information to him, but when he announces the names, people come across the finish line and they're exhausted yep. and they're tired and they're emotional and you can't help but just you just break down. You feel yep. these people. It's it's one of the coolest things, and it's free. You just go watch the finish yep. line. Yeah, yep. it's awesome. Yeah, yeah. And the cool thing about the event, it's uh, you know a lot of people think, oh, it's a marathon. I can't do a marathon. Um, there's a distance really for everybody, right? So there's a 5K, which is a, a beautiful 5K course. There's a 12K that starts at the Oaks in Ogden Canyon and runs down the canyon to, and everything finishes at 25th and Grand. So. Um, and then there's a half marathon and a marathon. So really, there's a, there's a distance for everybody, uh, whether you want to run it, whether you want to walk it. Um, we have families that walk. We have, you know, I personally, I did the 5K with my mother-in-law when she was 75 years old. Mm. One of the most incredible experiences of my life, um, watching her do that. And, um, and she, it, it was fantastic. So that's the idea is whether you're an elite runner or whether you're... Um, somebody that just uh, wants to participate on any level, there's something for everybody there. It really is a fantastic spectator yeah. sport as yeah. well. I, uh, my brother did marathons for a while, and there was one that he ran in, uh, obviously the most memorable one, he did uh, the double the marathon. Oh, right? yeah. And, uh, and, so, and so slightly different culture there, right? Sure. And so there, there was water, but for the most past, most parts, it was just it, Jameson. Beer cups. Of, it was Jameson. Oh, it was Guinness, <laughs> Guinness, Guinness, Guinness. Guinness, like, okay. As yeah. far as the eye could see. But I mean, it was it was passed out like you would pass out water along the way. Oh, my and, God. Uh, I love it. And there would be people that would run the marathon with with kegs, like wearing kegs like on their back. And I mean, so many costumes. and yeah. But just being there and just being part of it through that and, you know, encouraging these runners as they go by, like they, dare I say, they need that. They, they, sure. they need that Yeah, energy, that's a right? big deal. And so yep. if I could just, you know, be part of that year after year, it's a huge high. And it's all, you know, more times than not in, in our community, you're going to know somebody that's running. Sure. Right? Yep. Um, what was the attendance last year? Yeah, so we had just over 5,300 people last year. Wow. wow. Yeah. That's a big number. Yeah. Is that as, yeah. is that about representation. as big as it gets? What's uh, that? No, you know, at one point in 2015, um, there were actually 10,000 runners. So 2015 was yeah, the, the kind of the pinnacle year. And then as an industry, after 2015, everything kind of just started to, to go down. There was a lot of saturation in the market. And so um, and so we range between the five and 6,000 mark every year. And we get runners from all 50 states. Um, last year, we had runners from nine different countries. Um, it is a Boston qualifier. And what that means is the Boston marathon obviously is the kind of the pinnacle of marathons. You have to qualify to get in. And so there's, um, certifications and marathons are certified so that you can qualify, uh, and like with Ogden, you can qualify. And if you get a qualifying time, then that allows you to 
uh, enter into the Boston Marathon. So and what is it about Ogden's Marathon that allows you to qualify? Like, what are the? Well, we're sanctioned through through an organization called USA Track and Field that that makes us a Boston qualifier, and so that means they come out and they measure the course, they make sure that the course uh, meets all the sanction requirements, so that it is a qualified course. But one of the things that um, is a uh, is really appealing to a lot of people is we're a fast Boston qualifier, and because we're predominantly downhill. So if you think about it, we start just below Causey Reservoir, yeah. we finish here. And, um, and so we run down through Ogden Canyon. And so um, there, is, there are some uphill pieces, but the majority of our course is downhill. So it's a quick course. And it's not so like I ran St. George. St. George has a couple brutal hills. You don't want it too downhill. You want right. like a moderate right. downhill. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's a perfect grade um, to where people can really do some fast times. And so, so people purposely come here to qualify for Boston. Mm. Um, and it's a beautiful course. I mean, to be able to run down Ogden Canyon. Those are stretches of the road that you can't run down the middle of other than when it's called these organized uh, events yeah. yeah you've done the ogden marathon a couple times a couple you? times a couple times like, yeah what was your first experience with that well i finished so i was happy uh it's beautiful and uh, so that's one of the first thing that comes to mind is that it's beautiful it, it really is because you get to the you get to the canyon part the first part is um is is a is fast actually yeah. first part's pretty fast south fork canyon so, yeah you tend to gorgeous yeah tend to run really quick because it is a it's a moderate downhill but you, you i ran i remember running under my predicted rate and then you sort of go around the pine view and then you get into the canyon right when you need it because yeah it, it starts getting hard about, about those miles start sure. getting hard and then you get into the canyon and it, and it helps you because it's pretty and then you move into um down there behind like along the river behind dinosaur park and it those are my first marathon was Salt Lake, mm -hmm. and I and I broke down at like mile twenty six, mile twenty two or something because I'd never gone that far in my life, so it got really hard. And there was like it was like road, like you're in town. This is a long time ago, but in Ogden's it is it's pretty and it's nice and until you pop out in those last couple of yeah the blocks, last mile the last yep. mile yep but but it is it's motivational if you have to walk and take your time if you're hurting. At least it's pretty and it's nice and it's yeah. not, you know what I mean? And, yep. and I remember that as part of the experience, but yeah. yeah. And you were talking about Dublin and, and the, the huge component of people cheering people on our last mile, really a pop out off of the uh, Ogden river parkway and you get onto grant and then we've got a, basically a mile to get to the finish. That's kind of what we, we call it our hoopla zone. And so um, the idea is we line both sides of the streets with different groups that are cheering people on and, um, and it's it's really a, a special last mile for people to get them into the finish after a long road. So if you're going as a spectator for your first time, that's where you want to hit be. the hoopla. Yeah, mile. absolutely. Hoopla. Yeah. I used to yeah. live right there by the Ogden River. Okay. I remember when that happened. Yeah. I was pissed because I couldn't get my DoorDash. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't park. Yeah. I was like, "Where's my DoorDash?" She's yeah. like, "I can't Sorry come over that. there." Oh, that's yeah. Funny. Yeah. And I was no, just like, I, "You have to go through the other way." And he's yeah. like, "I did. I tried." And, yeah. But they like closed the road off weird. Yep. So. Yep. That was us. I'm sorry for that. Yeah. You're 32. <laughs> we had a hard time yeah. getting and the, any parade. Yeah. Like we're like we're like shut down. Well, and you know that's I'm glad you bring it up because that's a huge piece of it because um, one of our big focuses is just sustainable events, right? Yeah. So we want this to be a sustainable event. We want it to keep going. We realize the value that it brings. Um, but that's a, you know, that's a big focus when you're, tr when you have a 26 mile course and you're looking at all the businesses that are affected and all the residential areas that are affected. And so um, it's a huge focus for us to try to communicate not only with business owners, but, um, we have a, a team that goes out and hits the street and hits all of the areas to try to give as much advance warning and then and listen, really listen to the challenges um, because we want to we want to keep having it. But we know also that um, when we bring an event in like that, it um, it well, creates. Is a, it once a year? Yeah, just once a year. Okay. Yeah. I mean, F it, like, right, but, like, <laughs> like, just yeah. take over, like, okay. it doesn't, it, it yeah. doesn't take over, take as much as you can because it's, it's your marketing scheme yeah. and in the businesses, I get it. Like, leave them a little note, give them some cookies, whatever, yeah. but, <laughs> but <laughs> like, cookies. yeah, no, like, yeah. that's fine. Like, you're like, I'm going to give you 53,000 people yeah. walking by you. Like, you will be fine. Like, well, I appreciate like, that. Yeah. 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 But you we also, well, we just being respectful. Be, that's yeah, one we thing, be respectful. but it's once a year they can get over it. And then, you know what? I got my door dash like later that day. I was <laughs> All right, she said it, not me. You heard it here yeah. first. You heard it here first. Okay. <laughs> I've never been yeah. so frustrated in a car when I was trying to get my family and I were went to vacation in Southern California, and our condos in Oceanside, and we picked a day that we thought would be a great day, a Sunday, to go to the San Diego Zoo. 
and it was the same day as the San Diego Marathon, which I've oh, run yeah. in the past before, by the way. And I remember it was beautiful, actually. Um, and But you couldn't get to Balboa Park. Like every entrance and all the yeah. and the maps on the Google Maps. And I was like, like, what the hell is going on? It was the damn marathon. Uh, and it was finally like, it. I think we tried to get to the zoo early, but it was like around 10 o'clock or something when, when a lot of the finishers had already finished, when they started unbarricading the streets and you could finally get into Balboa Park and get over to the freaking yeah. the zoo. I'm like, this is the <laughs> most maddening thing I've ever experienced ever. So it, it that is part of the logistics yeah. of putting but on. But that's a, a big deal, like, right? About the messaging thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah like, it's communication yeah. and messaging. Yeah, like yeah, maybe huge. Google needs to work a thing out where it's just like, don't travel today. Like, yeah, yeah. You yeah. Know, yeah. Marathon going on, just yep. stay home. Yeah. So like yeah. like a weather storm alert. You know, yep. they have the Amber alerts. I know they can do it. Yeah. They they yeah. did. They actually well, did have stuff, but it but it wasn't. It completely accurate. It wasn't dialed in. Mm. And so it was a little off and, and it was frustrating because, you know, you're in a car with your wife and kids. You're just trying to get to the damn zoo. And right. it was like, I'm going to go way, the, oh, way yeah. around, <laughs> come determined. back this way. And then by the time you do that, yeah. something else is closed that mm -hmm. wasn't on the Google map because it was showing stuff closed for event closure, I think is what Google shows it oh, as. Wow. Do, you, okay. do you communicate to yep, Google? Yeah, we do. And, and okay. we do geofencing as well. And, okay. we, and, and right. we, we have particular, you know, uh, paid campaigns that go out um, throughout the geofenced area. So we're really trying to hit everybody um, and give them plenty of notice. But, you know, we understand that people get their information different ways, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so we're trying to be as diverse as we can and, and figure out, like, what's the best way to communicate with people and at least give advance warning. Because we know it yeah. does, it is an interruption. It really is. And, um, and so we just, we try really hard in that area. I think it's a good marketing thing too though yeah. like get used to it like we're gonna be here like <laughs> yeah you know and we really want to encourage like local businesses like if we're running by spellbound yeah. right like hey let's do something right yeah. let's do let's take this like i'll have set up some waters outside exactly yeah. my logo around all of them yeah you know? exactly so there's super great quick tattoos yeah, yeah. <laughs> super quick tattoos yeah like a dot, as you're running like by, as you're going by. <laughs> i like it that's yeah. real <laughs> abstract art right yeah there. yeah i'll just yeah. have super a machine quick. just yeah. like freckle a freckle we'll just get you a freckle right no we don't want you guys to sweat can't sweat after a tattoo. That's um, not a that's true. That's true. God, that would be amazing. You like sign all the paperwork in advance and pay for it, and then as you yeah. go by, she's like, you just gives it. you the one like ink dot somewhere, yep. and you're like, done. I love it. There's a, done. There's a partnership. Oh, we need to talk so this is a marathon that is somewhat dialed down. I would say, like you know, through the, how many years is it again? Twenty. 20 this will be the twenty second. Twenty well, second year. Yeah. And so. You mentioned something like, like dialed, to this dialed in, like, dialed in. Yeah. What did I say? Dialed, dialed down. down. I just want to make it like it's dialed, dialed up to a hundred, but down, down and yeah. up. It's dialed. It's, it's dialed. fully <laughs> dialed in. Yeah. And, and, uh, obviously you keep an eye out, you know, other cities do marathons, that mm -hmm. type of thing. But, uh, yeah. Like upcoming marathons, is there still any things that get tweaked? Is it? Oh yeah, yeah. Every year, you know, um, you know, it's a it's not only the marathon, but it, it, the day before we do a, a, a huge expo up at the field house at Weber State, um, mm -hmm. and so yeah, we're always looking at like you know different you know looking at the looking at these marathons that are um, uh, big marathons. So are these that, like charity events? Uh, some of them are. Some of them are charity yeah. events. Some of them have, you know, are fundraisers for others. But we're always just looking at like, you know, what are, what are others doing? Picking up best practices. There are so there are so many smart people out there that are putting together great events. And so we're always trying to um, take little nuggets from different ones and, and incorporate them back here. Nice. So, cool. yeah, we added, you know, like last year, for example, that was the first year of the 12K. And uh, we, you know, our runners, we, we do a, a survey every year. And our runners said, hey, you got to have a 10K because... We, you know, we didn't have that. We had the 5K, and then it jumped all the way to a half marathon, and then a full. And our runners said, "You gotta have a 10K." And so we we went and looked at, you know, okay, how could we do that? And we ended up with a 12, uh, because which is it, how many miles? Uh, 7.3 miles. Okay. But it, it made it made sense uh, to start at the Oaks, and it, because mm, Ogden Canyon yeah. is kind of peculiar in that it's narrow in certain sections. So if you did a tip a traditional 10K, there was really wasn't a great spot. I think so, 12K is a yeah. good amount yeah, cool. to sort of work your way up. Oh, it's fantastic! Yeah. I did yeah. a a marathon relay in uh, Tahoe with some friends sometime. Yeah. Another really beautiful spot, right? Sure. And I think that that was my leg. Was it was around that, or at Seven. least that's what I ended up writing right. was about right. that, and it was, you know, it was a little bit of a challenge for me, but it was totally totally doable. Yep. I think a five k is doable for, for for most. most people. Yep, yeah, yep. I think that's and yep. and so if you wanted to challenge yourself, just kind of that next level, I think a twelve k was a great idea. It's perfect. Yeah, yeah, it's and it, yeah, and and it it 
it's beautiful because you get the bulk of the canyon. Yeah. And you come out of the canyon, you're on the River Parkway and then into the finish. So, hmm. but that was another one where it's like, you know, we never had that distance. So, you know, even though we're, a, we're we've been doing this marathon for years um, and it, sure it's dialed in, um, we're always looking to like, how do we improve it? You know, and that's a perfect one where, um, where we never had that before. Yeah. And now that's a really uh, coveted distance. So, yeah. Todd, we're going to have to make this show an hour and a half, two hour show. It I can talk be, to these uh, guests forever. Yeah. I can be. listen to Luna yeah. forever. So yeah, yeah. I feel yeah. I feel like that's really interesting because I've never really talked to. I do like events too, but like, how do you organize something like that? Like, do you have to talk to like the police department, like the sure. city department? Yeah, like, yeah. Like, is it like a bunch of meetings? Yeah, like, tons of meetings, tons of planning, and we have. Such, it's like a year long process. Oh, it's a year long wow. process. Yeah, we have such great partnerships with the city and with the county, and so yeah, there's I'm law sure enforcement have have component. EMTs yeah, available. yep. There's medical. There's law enforcement. There's the health department component. Uh, there's mass gathering because, you know, it's, you, uh, on the permitting wow. side, we get a mass gathering permit. So, yeah, mm-hmm. there's tons of different components. It's, it really is a year long process. Is there process. like fees that come with that? Like fees the, to. Yeah, like so like if you had the health, health department. Yeah, sure. Then, there's fees with, with all of that. And so wow. that all goes into your So there's pump. like a budget like mm-hmm. you have to work with. Absolutely. So when you cut roads off, are there fees to that? Or do they, uh, is it like a community thing where they're like, all right, we just know we need to be here. Yeah. Like you don't pay the. There's not fees to cut roads off. There's permitting fees. And some of the, some of the road closures are live within a permit, like a, a, State UDOT Is there like permit. an insurance? Yep. Wow. Yeah, there's insurance. Like an event insurance? Oh, yeah. So you do need yeah. permission to shut down yes. the road. You do it. need yeah. permission. FYI. I can't just yeah. stand Good in the middle know. of the road. Yeah. 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 Block party. Yeah. 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 It's complex, but it it um, it um it all comes together uh, with a lot of planning. Yeah. yeah. And then the day comes and you're like, Phew. yeah. Like, Luna, you should well, see I think it. That's the day it's after. crazy. Yeah. It is come to the finish line next okay, year. I'll go. And it I'll is a work of by art. You guys. <laughs> it is yeah. It's like a work of art yeah. because okay. of all of the moving pieces involved and all the different lengths and all the different like they have they have I don't know how many wow. God knows how many buses you have because you gotta bus everybody yep. up there and back and it is oh, it's wow. super yeah. impressive. Yeah, I guess yeah. I never really think about like the the details. Lots of logistics behind because then you yeah, have yeah. to hire bus drivers. Yep. And yep. Yeah. Who, who like manages? Do you have like different like team members? Yeah, we do. do? We have, we, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, where you're looking at? Uh, like, wow. We have a we have a small team, so we have uh, five of us on our team, um, but we have a huge volunteer network yeah. that that help us pull it all together, and we have great partnerships with community partners. You have so, a renowned team of volunteers. Renowned, unbelievable. The, the, I, I like any time volunteers are brought up in any capacity. Gold Foundation is usually yep. part of that conversation. Absolutely. So is it a yeah. nonprofit or like mm-hmm. does it depend? Yeah, we're a nonprofit. You are going to be on an upcoming van sessions. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh my yeah. God. So yes. this, yeah. yeah. So this is a this is a whole other side of you. Okay. But we have to Here touch we go. on this because our listeners are familiar with the this dark other side. program that we do called All Van right. Sessions. And so we have to touch on that just for a moment. The name of your band is Lucky Find. Lucky Find. And, and it consists of is there three of you? Yep. Yeah, we're a trio out of Salt Lake. And, uh, well, I'm the Ogden person, but the other two are from Salt Lake, <laughs> play predominantly in Salt Lake. What kind of music do you play? What do you play? Uh, Americana, uh, I would say it's probably the, the, the genre. I, and we, we play a little of everything. So, uh, rock country, folk, Americana based stuff. Uh, I'm a guitar player. Nice. And you're a guitar player and you've, mm-hmm. you've been playing for how long? Oh, wow. Gosh. Uh, Is this something you've, you've integrated into you know, your childhood, or is that something you picked yeah, up later on? Yeah, I started on? as a kid, uh, but I never really took it too seriously. Um, um, but I, I picked back up probably about 20 years ago, and um, and uh, had a, a good friend of mine who was a, a guitar player, and I went and watched him play one night, and uh, the next, it was so inspiring. The next day I said, hey, you got to take me to a guitar store. i got to buy a guitar. And that's how it all started, and, um, and it's just been wonderful. So, yep, kind of self-taught. Um, I'm an ear guy, so, and uh, I, I love it. And this trio, I played in a lot of bands over the years, but this trio, um, uh, just great people, and it just comes easily, and it's, it's a lot of fun. I love it. And you'll, we'll get to know you and your band, obviously, March 2023 Van Sessions. So look that up regardless awesome. of when you listen to this show. 